Hi, I'm Merrick Yateman. Uh, I'm a professor of microengineering uh, at Imperial College, uh, which I've been since 2005, and uh, I've spent most of my working career at Imperial researching a range of topics from surface plasmons to optical communication to wireless sensors. I'm curious about how we can harvest energy from ambient sources, especially for wireless electronic devices, and mainly that's because that'll make it possible to have pervasive sensing, sensing on and around us and all through our environment. Electronic communication started with people communicating with each other, that's to say people to people, but actually there's a whole new generation of information coming, which is the information of machines talking directly to each other. Now in 2012 we have about 5 billion devices connected to the internet, that roughly corresponds to the number of people on the planet, uh, clearly some of us are doing more than our fair share on that number, others less. But we can easily imagine that the number of things that might usefully be connected to the internet per person on the planet is really very high. Kitchen appliances, items of clothing, livestock, for example, are already tagged and will soon each have their own IP address. And uh, so there's really a vast range of uh, potential places to, uh, to connect information producing uh, devices. It's quite conceivable that we could go up by several orders of magnitude. So in 20 years, could we be above a trillion devices connected to the internet? I think it's not only possible, but probably likely. So these things we've been talking about, uh, sensors in smart metering, for example, and sensors on smartphones that uh, are enabling a variety of applications, these things are already happening, they're planned, they're well known, and uh, no surprises there, I don't think, for most people. But if you look a little bit farther out, maybe over a 10-year horizon, as more and more of this data starts coming on stream and more and more of these applications start getting used, uh, there are some quite important implications about how we handle all this data. Uh, for example, human intervention uh, in the decision-making around data is going to become more and more difficult because there's just going to be so much of it. And we are going to need, uh, if you like, digital assistants and servants uh, to filter and interpret this data for us uh, so that we're not drowned under a deluge of information from all our gadgets and devices as well as our friends and uh, uh, our information sources. So looking farther out, say on a 10 to 20 year time frame, now we have these sensor-enabled systems interacting with each other, empowered to make decisions, uh, empowered to trade information with each other. You can imagine maybe something like a um, cybernetic ecology development, which is like a kind of society of machines, if you like. And uh, I think it's rather speculative at this point, but, but you can imagine that some things will have to develop in that interaction, uh, which are a bit like the way that a complex society develops among humans. That doesn't mean there aren't challenges to be overcome, and there are a whole variety of these. There are economic challenges, uh, challenges about what the business models are, there are legal challenges about privacy and ownership, but there are technological challenges, uh, which is probably where my role comes in a bit more. We're looking for ways to power wireless devices from ambient energy sources in order to eliminate the maintenance burden of batteries. So a whole variety of methods that we're going to use to power miniature electronics. So I think if we keep at it, uh, we're going to get to a state where we really are going to be able to power ambient electronics that will go forever. Yeah.